Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a red-white aggressive knight tribal deck that's playing the full set of Inspiring Veteran, seeing other knights we control get plus one plus one, and we've got a bunch of other anthem effects to reward us for playing all these knights. We've got the full play set of Icon of Ancestry, which when it enters the battlefield we have to choose a creature type, and creatures of the chosen type get plus one plus one, and also functions as a card draw engine in the late game, since for a three mana we can tap the icon and look at the top three cards of our library, reveal a creature card of the chosen type from among them and put it into our hand. So a great way to help us uh, kind of outgrind the more controlling decks as well as pumping up the team. And an interesting thing about the deck is that most of the knights in this deck, with the exception of Weaselback Ratcap, are also all humans. And uh, one of our knights in particular, Worthy Knight, also makes a bunch of human tokens, because whenever we cast a knight spell with Worthy Knight in play, we get to make a 1-1 white human creature token. So the deck is definitely capable of going pretty wide, and uh, sometimes it even benefits us to name human with Icon of Ancestry instead of knight, because of course that will also pump all the human tokens we get from the Worthy Knight, and outside of the Weaselback we can still find all the other knights in the deck when we use the ability. And then another creature that helps us go wide is the Sky Knight Vanguard, a 2-mana 1-2 human knight with flying, and whenever the Vanguard attacks we get to make a 1-1 white soldier creature token that's tapped and attacking. The soldier token not a human, but that still helps us build up a wide board. And then another payoff for going wide in this deck is the Circle of Loyalty, which is a 6-mana legendary artifact, costing 1 generic mana less to cast for each knight we control, so we can often just cast it for double white. And then all creatures we control get plus 1 plus 1, so that includes our knights, but also our humans and our soldiers. And whenever we cast a legendary spell, we also get to make a 2-2 knight creature token with vigilance. Doesn't come up a whole lot, but we do have Amber Cleave in the deck as well, which counts as a legendary artifact to trigger the circle of loyalty and every now and then if we draw the second copy of circle of loyalty we can still play it just to get that extra knight token and then it also gives us an additional mana sync ability for four mana we can tap the circle to make a 2-2 white knight creature token with vigilance so that in combination with icon of ancestry still gives this aggressive deck a nice late game and then another very important piece of the puzzle here is the acclaimed contender which is another payoff card for playing all these knights three mana for a 3-3 human knight and when the acclaimed contender enters the battlefield if we control another knight we get to look at the top five cards of our library reveal a knight aura equipment or legendary artifact card from among them and put it into our hand so outside of the four copies of icon of ancestry the acclaimed contender finds every single card in our deck so it provides a nice two for one upon entering the battlefield as long as we can have another knight in play which should not be an issue as every single creature in this deck is also a knight so let's take a look at the rest of the deck here at one mana we've got a lot of different one drops because it is important for this deck to get out to a fast start and put lots of cheap creatures into play especially in combination with cards like worthy knight which rewards us for playing multiple knights and the inspiring veteran which also wants us to have multiple knights in play to get the plus one plus one so at one mana we've got the full play set of a venerable knight one mana for a two one and when the venerable knight dies we get to put a plus one plus one counter on target knight we control and then we also have the full playset of Fervent Champion, one mana for a 1-1 with First Strike and Haste. And when the champion attacks, another target attacking knight we control gets plus one plus so until end of turn. So great in multiples as well. And equip abilities, we activate that target Fervent Champion costs three generic mana less to activate, which can also be quite useful in combination with Ember Cleave, which we'll get to in a second. Then our final one drop is definitely the weakest one, but it's still important to have that critical mass of one drops in the deck. This one is not a human, so it doesn't get plus one plus one if we decide to name human with Icon of Ancestry, but still a one mana, one one knight, and for two mana we can give it plus two plus oh until end of turn, so it can hit pretty hard by itself. Then at two mana we've got some of the more important creatures in the deck, the full playset of Worthy Knight, which helps us go wide and uh, take advantage of the anthem effects from Circle of Loyalty and Icon of Ancestry. We've got our Inspiring Veteran giving Knights plus one plus one, and the Sky Knight Vanguard, which also helps us go wide. And an important interaction to point out is that when we're attacking with Sky Knight Vanguard, the 1 1 Soldier token will also be tapped and attacking, which also reduces the cost of Amber Cleave by one. So the Vanguard basically counts as two creatures attacking for the cost reduction on Amber Cleave. Then we've got our four copies of Acclaimed Contender, which can help us find all these different legendary artifacts. 
and also just a nice body to equip with the Amber Cleave, as it's the biggest creature in the deck by default. And then we also have two copies of Sky Knight Legionnaire as a 3 mana 2-2 two -two Human Knight with Flying and Haste, so more evasive threats to complement our Sky Knight Vanguards. And the Haste also means we can use it to maybe finish off a Planeswalker that just minused. And then we've got our four copies of Icon of Ancestry, and then two Circle of Loyalty, and to round out the deck, two copies of Ember Cleave as a six mana legendary artifact equipment with Flash, so we can play it at instant speed, and it costs one generic mana less to cast for each attacking creature we control, and as you know by now, our deck can go quite wide, so we can often play it for just double red, and when Ember Cleave enters the battlefield, we can attach it to target creature we control, so we can sometimes attack with everyone and then just equip the creature where it lines up the best, and then the equipped creature gets plus one plus one, double strike and trample, so a great way to close out the game or just break through a board stall. And then it costs three mana to move the Amber Cleave to something else. Of course, if we're trying to equip a Fervent Champion, we can do so for free, so those also have great synergy. And while the creatures in this deck might appear smaller than, let's say, the red green aggro decks, we still have a lot of anthem effects between the Veteran, the Icon, and the Circle of Loyalty. And that also helps us get a nice big creature to then equip with the Amber Cleave to help us get in more damage. And then going over the mana base, it's definitely one of the strong points in this deck, since all our lands come into play untapped, and only Sacred Foundry costs life to get into play untapped at the cost of 2 life. And that is mostly thanks to the addition of Tournament Ground, which is great in a Knights deck like this, as we can tap it to add a red or white, or even black, and we can spend this mana only to cast a Knight or Equipment spells. So we can basically cast everything in the deck. The only card where it doesn't quite synergize as well is with Circle of Loyalty, which is not an Equipment or a Knight, so we do still need two other white sources to get this in play but uh, it's usually not a problem by the time we want to cast this. And then we have 8 planes and 6 mountains to complement our playsets of Sacred Foundry and Tournament Grounds. So yeah, that's the deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got a decent hand. 1-drop, so 2-drop, 3-drop, Icon of Ancestry to refuel, and a claimed contender to maybe find something else useful. And it looks like we might be up against another aggressive red deck. They're gonna leave Fervent Champion back, but uh, as it turns out, we can still attack into it. Would have also been reasonable to play the other Fervent Champion, so that I could attack with both, but then they could still trade off for one of my champions. Opponent seems to be on the red Black Knight, so we'll see which one of the two decks is better here, between red-white and black-red. Alright, so I've got a lot of options. I think I like Worthy Knight into Fervent Champion, and then next turn I might be naming Human with Icon. So let's do that. And we're not gonna send Inspiring Veteran, and my opponent explodes. Just uh, too good of a start, and you can imagine here Icon pumping up our entire team, including the human token, would be pretty devastating, and then we still have Contender to find more action. So this was kind of the ideal start for the deck, and there's not much my opponent could do about it, being on the receiving end here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a decent opening hand, both of our legendary artifacts, a one-drop, couple good twos, so seems like a solid keep. And then turn two, probably play the Worthy Knight first. Opponent could have a Sailor here to trade for the Knight, but we want to make sure to play the Worthy Knight first, so that uh, if that does happen, we at least get to put a counter on the Worthy Knight. Could also just be an Opt. If I knew for a fact they had a Sailor, I could also decide to not attack here, so that I can play Veteran first, but they had the Sailor, just didn't want to trade, which also makes sense. Blue-white, so blue-white Flyers is my guess. So this seems like a winnable matchup, as my opponent is kind of paying a premium for their creatures to have flying, whereas if it's a pure race, we just get the more efficient uh, stats on the ground to try and kill them, but we'll see. Second Amber Cleave, not particularly useful. But um, yeah, let's just play Veteran, see if they maybe have a Quench. Still get the extra token to facilitate Ember Cleave. 
and we'll get in there. Alright, nothing from my opponent so far. Maybe end of turn, another flash creature, Fairy Vandal, alright. Well, next turn we can jam the Circle of Loyalty, which is going to be quite strong, or we could attack an Ember Cleave. We've got the mana to do both. Hanged Executioner, sure. And if we play Circle first, then we also get to make a 2-2 two -two Knight when we play Ember Cleave, so that's kind of sweet. I think I still Circle before playing the other Veteran here, a bit more mana efficient. Maybe I get to combine Veteran with an Ember Cleave next turn. And yeah, I think we smash with everyone, maybe keep Veteran back. Now I'll smash with everyone. And yep, yeah, opponent explodes. Just uh, too good of a start. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, this seems keepable enough. We need a third land eventually for these icons, but we've got one drop into multiple two drops. Probably gonna lead with the Vanguard. Just to get those tokens going. Opponent on blue-green of some variety. Looks like it might be the flash deck. So we've got a couple of options. Kinda wanna go Ratcap plus Veteran this turn. Ratcap first on the off chance that they wanna counter this. I'm guessing this veteran is probably going to get countered, but then next turn we can just jam an icon. Alright, it does not get countered. So hit for five. And then I'm probably going to name knight, given that we have a weasel back in play. And not a worthy knight, instead of naming human. Right, it's going to be a growth spiral, so my opponent will have 4 mana next turn. If they can come up with a large blocker, they can potentially slow us down. It's going to be Hydroid Crisis for X equals 2. Not quite large enough here. We did draw a worthy knight, I think I'm still going to name knight here with all. We get an extra 1-1 one, one token here from the Vanguard, so the original token definitely wants to be attacking. And yeah, my opponent scoops it up. If they're not dead, they're forced to chum block here, I think, and then they're gonna be in pretty rough shape next turn. So as you can see, most games with this deck, where you're on the play and you get to curve out, you don't leave the opponent with uh, much of a chance. So that's kind of the game plan, but if the game does drag out, like we did have Icon to potentially find more knights and eventually build up a wide enough board to kill the opponent. So while the games themselves might not be super interesting, at least we're kind of showcasing the best case scenarios for this deck where we're not facing any sweeper effects. On to the next one. Alright, so this time we're on the draw, so we'll see how our deck fares on the draw, which of course is a world of difference for an aggro deck like this. Definitely have a keepable hand. Missing double red for Ember Cleave. But still have a reasonable start here. Alright, there's a second red source. Up against the blue green. Let's see if we have a quench here. We do. The flash deck also a deck that significantly improves on the play versus on the draw. Alright, well, we drew a bunch of lands, which is not what we wanted. And if they keep countering our creatures, it's going to be difficult to get this Ember Cleave in play. And the champion, unlike the Weasel back and the Venerable Knight, doesn't deal a ton of damage by itself. Now we're getting in... Uh, 
ambusher territory, which is also pretty scary. Yeah, let's uh, attack for one. And this time we'll play a land before playing the Vanguard in case of another quench. It's gonna be a Frilled Mystic instead. Nissa who shakes the world. So it looks like this is the uh, blue-green flash deck that's being played in the Mythic Championship. Another Vanguard's not gonna cut it. So I can Amber Cleave. Um, it still just trades for the Breeding Pool, which isn't great. So I'm probably better off just uh, playing Vanguard and passing. And Brazen Borrower to Bounce Champion. And looks like this might be a Hydroid Crisis. Well, we had plenty of good draws on the play here. Now we're kind of on the receiving end of a great draw. And that should pretty much wrap things up. Didn't think we can come back from this. I can get my Amber Cleave in play, but uh, the Hydroid still blocks our entire team here. So the Vanguard dies. And looks like this uh, is game over here. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, I guess with a third land this sounds decent, and we can potentially miss for a turn and still make a play. Vanguard versus Veteran is kind of interesting here, I think I'm leaning Vanguard. Just get those tokens going first. And the veteran's usually at its most effective once we already have a board full of knights. Alright, perfect. We get to double spell. So a small chance this can bait out a counter spell. Could have also decided to just pump the rat cap instead, but maybe they have something else altogether. I guess it could be a growth spiral here. Yep. Well, I've got a nice board here. I can next turn can name a knight probably. Risen Reef. So this is the elemental ramp deck. Does not find the lands. And a grazer, All right? That's an extra blocker, definitely matters. Next turn we could see Cavalier of Thorns, which is uh, gonna be a pretty good blocker. So this is our last turn to maybe get a big chunk of damage in without losing any attackers. 
So I can name knights. And my opponent explodes just too far behind. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Double Worthy Knight, pretty exciting. Especially in combination with Amber Cleave, as we can go wide and make it a lot cheaper. Facing a Knight of a Legion. Red black, so we get a rematch from earlier. This time our opponent's on the play. So let's see if we can win this matchup on the draw. Hopefully the Worthy Knight survives. Should have attacked first with the Weasel back, although... Pumping Weasel back... Just to trade for Crusader. Don't even know if that's something we were interested in. Although the chances of my opponent blocking, I guess, are still pretty low, so we definitely should have... Considered it at least. So. We'll take it. What we don't want to see is a Regisaur. Spawn of Mayhem. I guess. Um, falls in that same category. But now we can just go wide. And then set up for an Icon of Ancestry next turn perhaps. Let's go Worthy Knights into... I kind of want to play the Fervent Champion, just in case I want to name Human with Icon. Whereas the Weaselback is not. No good attacks for now. Well, we could get Amber Cleaved here by the opponents. Definitely looks like an Ember Cleave to me. So the problem here is that we're probably dead to an Ember Cleave anyway, since we would take 10 damage from the Spawn of Mayhem, and then uh, take one more damage on their upkeep and die. So I probably need to kind of block under the assumption that they don't have Ember Cleave, planning for the long game where we can take advantage of these extra tokens from the Worthy Knights instead. So in that scenario it makes more sense to put my... Fervent Champion in front of their Fervent Champion, in case they do have a Black Lance Paragon, instead of uh, potentially losing my Worthy Knight, which I'm gonna need if the game does go longer. Uh, it is an Amber Cleave. So we're at 1, and the Spawn of Mayhem is gonna kill us next turn. So I gotta somehow kill my opponent, but they're at 15. So... That's going to be uh, difficult to say the least. I can Amber Cleave them, but uh, yeah, there's just not enough damage. Vanguard can't really chump since spawn is trample and we would die to the trigger and upkeep here. So we seem pretty dead here. Alright, so yeah, we were on the draw this time. Definitely makes a huge difference in uh, these types of games. And uh, yeah, the big flying trampling spawn of mayhem was a bit difficult to manage if everything happened on the ground. Of course, we had a steady stream of chum blockers from Worthy Knight. So let's say they did have a Regisaur, but no Amber Cleave we could have maybe gotten there. But uh, yeah, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Wouldn't mind picking up a third land, so turn three we can have an efficient turn of Veteran plus another one drop. Facing Thornwood Falls. Alright, and there's a mountain. So, let's lead with a rat cap. Temple of Epiphany, so it looks like a Teamer Reclamation deck. So I could go double one drop, but it works out better if I play Veteran here. And then we can uh, one drop plus Veteran next turn. Make sure to play the Tournament Grounds on the off chance that I draw another Fervent Champion, for instance, and I want to just play three 1-drops next turn. Alright, untapped land, opponent passes, so if this is a Flame Sweep, 
I guess we can figure that out by playing another Inspiring Veteran first. My opponent's going to be forced to cast a Flame Sweep beforehand, otherwise my uh, team gets out of range, and then I can still play Fervent Champion to hit for two. So I guess that's reasonable here. And I guess I'll play the planes first, in case we need a Circle of Loyalty at some point. So, probably gonna see a Flame Sweep here. All right, Mystical Dispute and Response, fair enough. I guess we'll play another Champion, hope they don't have the Flame Sweep. Breeding Pool untapped, there's a Reclamation, but uh, my opponent had to take quite a bit of damage from their own mana base. So, we'll play the Veteran, and then kind of see again if they have a response or not, and then we can act accordingly. So we'll play Mountain, play Veteran, and see if they have a Flame Sweep in response. Alright, looks like they don't, and they just explode. Well, they did have turn for Reclamation, but they didn't have the interaction they needed, so we still managed to get there. Alright, so nice uh, Inspiring Veteran as a reward, pretty fitting. So, as you can see, the deck is definitely capable of some very explosive starts. Undoubtedly, the deck benefits massively from being on the play compared to on the draw, as you get to leverage that aggressive start even more. But uh, yeah, still a nice, fun Knight Tribal deck that's uh, capable of both having those early wins as well as sometimes outgrinding the opponent with its powerful artifacts. So yeah, that's gonna be it for me today. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.